documentary is intended to honor and recognize the hard work of film directors who have focused on providing a profound diagnosis on the armed conflict in Colombia. The film industry provides us with valuable pieces of undisputable currency to be evaluated, even in the moments of post-conflict. We part from the evaluation of some movies in which we seek the understanding of the extension and dimension of violence in Colombia, mostly in the past 20 years. In the short film, Natural Route, by Andres Huerta, the script becomes revealing, configured in an exceptional genre of great visual and auditive impact. This Nariñense director expresses his vision of the conflict through a computer-animated work. A black involving stain is felt to be covering a group of children who are running and playing with a paper airplane before they encounter disgrace. They live in a green environment. Violent cuts their dreams. Smiles are torn away by the sounds of war. At the end, destruction and desolation is left. This film is a representative example to understand that with techniques and filming resources we can gather, collect and save material to help comprehend the crudeness of a unique conflict. The land in Colombia has become a cemetery. The list of mortal victims and disappeared people is endless, without, not even yet, having a clear perspective of its extension. It turns to a laboratory sentence from the author Santiago Gamboa, when in his book, In War and Peace, he narrates the cruel situation. Bones and more bones feeding our rich ecosystem. Numerous fatal episodes have flooded the Colombian geography in the past two centuries, without the conflict having reached its end. As the Colombian writer states, whenever I fly over Colombia, I always think of this beautiful country, how green, and how many tone of green. It is a beautiful and floral carpet. But yet, if one could lift it, what would we find underneath? Thousands of broken bones, penetrated skulls, sad mutilated skeletons, the ones from much before, the ones from after, and the ones from now. Numerous are the recent film projects which display the cruel reality that has erupted in a country constantly tormented by the negligence towards its people and the horror that has come to be present. We do not unknow the horror in the feeling of the author Pablo Montoya's voice. It is so pure and elementary that it demands no explanation and the description of its forms results in futile. It arrives at its moment and mutates and blinds us and submerges us in a state of detention. Following the author Manuel Reyes Mate in his work The Duty of Memory, which constitutes itself in an indispensable and fundamental piece to keep us firm, we must rethink the truth, politics and moral, keeping into account the barbarism. For the Spanish philosopher, memory comes to the scene as a consequence of two experiences. That not everything is thinkable, meaning that there is also the unthinkable. And that unthinkable has taken place. No sea terco, Gabriel. Usted sabe que le van a terminar quitando los hábitos y que usted aquí sin sotana no lo dejan vivo más de dos días. Ay, 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 ay. Yo a usted lo quiero mucho. Y me va a dar mucho pesar que se vaya. Pero prefiero mil veces verlo irse antes de que le pase algo. Ay. Silencio. Silencio, silencio. Silencio. Baje la cabeza usted, cabrón. Baje la cabeza. Esta es la historia, señores, de un hombre muy conocido al que todo ya conoce y que se llama Porfirio, Porfirio el aeropirata, por todos muy conocido. 
Nunca he tenido problemas en lo que llevo de vida, pero el 12 de septiembre se me complicó la vida por reclamarle al Estado los derechos de su vida. ¿Qué está pasando aquí, Salvador? No vayan a salir. Desde hace rato andan con el cuento ese de las desapariciones. Pero esas cosas no pasan aquí. Both fiction movies and documentaries are an indispensable testimony in the duty of memory. In the first two decades of the new millennium, prodigious film records have constituted themselves in first-hand testimony to better understand particularities of a conflict with no equal. A critic expectator emerges. After examining some films which place us in front of a mirror that portrays our own shame, There are numerous lucid films that teach us that a hideous, unbearable stink lies within the surroundings. One of them to highlight is The Violence, a work by Jorge Forero. The violence in the film by Forero shows us in such a subtle, normal way through three short films which complement and integrate themselves into one very good movie with a conducting thread and a certain balance among them, showing the stories of three of the most important actors in this conflict, guerrilla, military forces, and paramilitary groups. The movie allows us to see ourselves before a mirror, portraying violence from a daily perspective, as if it were a part of our day-to-day -day routines. A diagnosis of what violence implies is made, of what daily activity implies. While the first two stories center on the victim, the third story centers on the offender. Society falls into a state of daily routine and into a state of normality, losing the levels of awareness. Through their work, the makers of recent movies has assumed as a golden rule the duty of informing and reporting on what has occurred in the country. What is invisible in instances of power becomes visible to the public eye. We find movies on fake positives, forceful displacement, forceful disappearing of citizens, forced overtaking of lands, massacres, violence against women, child recruitment, etc. Like Cat and Mouse by Rodrigo Triana, 2002. The First Night by Luis Alberto Restrepo, 2003. The Shadow of the Walker by Ciro Guerra, 2004. PV1 by Statolopoulos, 2007. The Passion of Gabriel by Luis Alberto Restrepo, 2009. Portrait of a Sea of Lies by Carlos Gaviria, 2010. Society of a Traffic Light by Rubén Mendoza, 2010. The Colors of the Mountain, by Carlos Arbeláez, 2010. Impunity, by Holman Morris and Juan José Lozano, 2011. Silence in Paradise, by Colbert Garcia, 2011. Colombian Postcards, by Ricardo Coral Dorado, 2011. Small Voices, by Jairo Carrillo, 2011. All Your Dead, by Carlos Moreno, 2011. Porfirio by Alejandro Landes, 2011. The Serga by William Vega, 2012. The Cold Land by Jaime Osorio Marquez, 2012. Letters from a Shadow by Daniela Abad and Miguel Salazar, 2015. Alias Maria by Jose Luis Rugeles, 2015. Violence by Jorge Forero, 2015. Dark Animal by Felipe Guerrero, 2016. It is plausible to firmly evoke the words of the Holocaust survivor, Primo Levi. It is unlawful to forget. It is unlawful to not speak. If we keep quiet, who will speak? We may try to make historical memory when facing the horrific forgetting of a nation towards its victims, caused by their own indifference and forgetfulness. Here lies the impotence that has accompanied the victims for so many years. 
The victims are being with a broken spirit, caused by the suffering imposed upon them, by the hell that has emerged within a forgetful and indolent society. The victim has become a shadow. This forgetness is the great ruin that makes the reconstruction of our decomposed society impossible. We refer to the lack of memory of those who prefer not to know of the suffering of their brothers. This is the option of he who prefers to fall into a state of sleep, of he who feels that comfort of belonging to a community proclaimed to be the happiest people on earth, willing to rejoice, to brag on their fairs, of the soccer and of their beauty queens. Die Menschen, als sie noch hereinkamen in Krematorium, haben alles gesehen. In the movie Shaw 1985 from French director Claude Lanzmann, three phases are shown. These phases are differentiated in the process of the extermination of the Jewish people. The first in which the consignment was, you may not live among us as Jews. In the second moment, which proclaims a phase that produces the forced displacement, you may not live among us. And finally, we encounter extermination when they indicated, you may not live. How many times do we find these same three phases in the process of extermination in Colombia? For instance, what occurred with the political party of Union Patriotica, with the peasantry population, amongst others? In this first moment, the consignment was, you may not live among us as different people. This meaning as communist, unionist, peasants. Then there came a new order. You may not live among us. Moment of internal forced displacement or seeking refugee in other countries. For those who did not comply with the commandment, then only death was left for the consignment. You may not live. There are several committed directors who evaluate the Colombian conflict in a critical and profound matter, highlighting the role of the victim, referring him as a being sentenced by lack of memory. To this sense, Ciro Guerra offers us a very peculiar look at the victim in his alleged film, The Shadow of the Walker, 2004. The Shadow of the Walker is a movie filmed in digital video, with an intelligent script accompanied by a beautiful soundtrack music. In the film, the expectator identifies one purpose, to show the crudeness of a conflict which has inflicted deep wounds. The lives of two men, victim and victimizer, crossroads in this movie. The first is a handicapped man, victim of the conflict. He is Manier, played by Cesar Badillo, who lives in a rented apartment in Bogota. Manier's body registers an irreversible injury. He is a man who has lost a leg, and who even though he has survived, he feels dead. The other character, Nameless, is a street salesman, interpreted by Ignacio Prieto. He is a man tormented by the world tainted of gray. His past traps him, and he finds no redemption. He is a lonely man, an eyewitness to violence, for whom forgiveness will never be possible. The short film shows us a country marked by many years of unhappiness, and in which the live people feel more dead than the very dead ones, as revealed by the street salesman. La muerte es cosa hijo de puta. Para los que no la conocen, para los que se quedan. Los muertos, cagados de la risa allá en el infierno. Y los que se quedan, esperando a ver qué les toca. The conflict victim, as shown since the presentation by director Guerra, has no hope. Nothingness invades the victim. He feels alone, despite the fact that he, Paradoxically, is the better capability of understanding his victimizer. Hooray for films. They provide us with moments to recognize our own shame, being to King's checkmate. 
We are responsible for what happens around us because, in the face of others' suffering, we are not allowed to look the other way. And, if a human being wants to discover among his life moral dignity, he mustn't refer to the demands of his conscience, but must take charge of his fellow kind. The topics of forced displacement and peasantry massacre in the hands of paramilitary groups are illustrated in the movie Portraits in a Sea of Lies by Carlos Gaviria, 2010. This is a fictionary film about the most dramatic manifestations of the conflict, the faces of the forced displacement victims caused by paramilitary groups. Gaviria's neorealist movie presents us the drama lived by a young woman forcefully displaced since she was a child and whose identity was stolen by violence. The character, interpreted by Paola Baldion, represents the forcefully displaced sent to live in an unhospital, unembracing city, which she will never feel as hers. Marina is a symbol of the pain caused by the violence that comes from an absurd conflict and which has left her in a state of muteness and amnesia. Marina is one from the great group of forcefully displaced peasants that fill the lines of misery in the cities. The displaced people may be identified with those anonymous and lost beings in the big cities. Presented to the public by writer Mario Mendoza as beings of a lost look, famed, gone, and who do not recognize anyone. Beings who have no future, who are going nowhere, and that are rejected in a city that reflects the horrors not unknown by us, as well as with those ghostly like beings who drag along their dark presence down the avenues, or who sleep under skyscrapers, and who are not anymore like us, who will never again be like us. Beings that have gone beyond the doorway of what is human and live within a gray world. Beings that, as expressed by Mendoza, do not scare us anymore. We simply do not see them. We have created a mechanism of defense to simply not perceive them. Nevertheless, Portraits in the Sea of Lies is a sample of a variable provoked by the victim's resistance. Marina struggles against the forgetness forced upon by the violent. Attempts to recover from her state of amnesia, Marina seeks to regain her lost identity, lost to the paramilitary action that threw her to a state in which she could never recognize herself. After the death of her grandfather, played by Edgardo Roman, Marina and her cousin Jairo, a street photographer played by Julian Roman, will undertake in a small, old, broken-up car the journey back to the land from which they were robbed of their dreams. Marina and Jairo travel through the roads of a lavish country, a place of imposing mountains, of unique geometrical shapes, and with a shade of green that confirms the richness of its lands, a paradise of crystal rivers, a garden of dense and variable flora and fauna. The landscapes shown in the Carlos Gaviria's film are simply beautiful. The possibility of contemplating these scenes, listening to Colombian music with grand interpretations of bands and groups such as those of Maria Mulata, reconforts all But nevertheless, the amazement caused by contemplating so many wonders, shock is produced. 
when the viewer sees the pain reflected in the faces of those marginated beings. In Gaviria's movie, the leading characters undertake the return to lands in which the absence of memory has been imposed upon its inhabitants. And there will also not be a redemption in the territory from which the victims have been displaced. The efforts of Marina and Haido will be unsuccessful. Silence, death, and a sea where the displaced is buried will close the story of this profound suffering. When the journey reaches its end, tragedy will be imposed. Again, the action of paramilitary groups sacrifice another life, the life of Haido. This movie reports that in such a lavish land as Colombia, the capability of memory has been absent. The victims have been left on their own in the process of reaching the truth. But it is not easy to remember when triviality and superficiality are constantly present. During the development of the state's policies for the struggle against insurgency from 2002 until 2008, many decrees were issued, which offered incentives and awards in favor of the public forces. The desire of some possible beneficiary groups in showing good results in numbers of enemy death during military operations led to the planning and execution of a dreadful scam. The final result? a horrific sacrifice of numerous emulated victims, civilians not in the armed lines. Colombian film industry has known how to portray this sad episode of the Colombian conflict. It is all about an unequal event at worldwide levels. And the film industry finds in Silence in Paradise by Colbert Garcia 2011 an excellent exponent. The movie is a fictional testimony based on real facts, on fake positives, that narrate the tragedy of Roland, a character played by Francisco Bolivar, who portrays an inhabitant of Paradise, a low social standing neighborhood in the south of Bogota. The movie tells the story of a 20-year-old man who works honestly. The conditions of the neighborhood where he lives and works are very hostile. Roland makes a living with the use of a megaphone and an unusual bicycle, tricycle-like. The young man is of a humble and warm spirit who falls in love with a young woman called Lady, whose love he wins through his letters to her. Lady. Me atrevo a escribirle porque siento que la conozco desde siempre. Yo no sabía por qué este barrio se llama El Paraíso. Si tengo que enfrentar todos los días el mismo tierrero que se levanta, Sin que parezca que se vaya a acabar nunca. The film turns tragic when Roland's bicycle is stolen because he doesn't pay extortion imposed by a group of young men in the same sector. Maricón, a usted le olvidó que la vacuna. This leads Ronald to find another type of job. In this moment, the scam robs him of his dream. Ronald becomes a victim of a business of vacancies, temporary jobs. Roland believed to have found a way to lighten his difficult economical situation. Instead, death was awaiting for him. The young leading character in the story, Silence in Paradise, is executed after falling into the hands of military men who killed a countless number of youngsters and presented them as enemy fatalities during combat. In exchange for monetary rewards, a dream is destroyed. Paradise, the neighborhood, was not an earthly Eden, but the affection of Lady was the paradise seeked by Ronald. The contents of the letters read by Lady when the two young lovers sit back to back is very revealing. Pensaba que este era un paraíso distinto. No de esperanzas, sino de desesperanzas. Uno del que todos se quieren ir, aunque la mayoría ya puede irse solamente cuando se ha muerto. Como el paraíso de verdad, pero al revés. The message is clear. 
to show the spirit of a man not yet contaminated by evil. However, the nightmare imposed itself. Paradise was vanished. Despite the desires to return and be in the arms of his beloved lady, he will never accomplish his wish. The Averno finally takes a paradise linked to a personal project. The imputable actions of government agents are responsible for this disgrace. A declining fate falls upon Ronald, and the future of this young man is shattered by some kind of curse present in his very own neighborhood. The so longed for paradise on earth has been sacrificed by the paranoia coming from the host of death itself. The tragedy of child victims of the armed conflict has been portrayed in films, in movies such as The Colors of the Mountain by Carlos Cesar Arbelaez, 2010, Small Voices by Jairo Carrillo, 2011, and in Alias Maria, Jose Luis Rugeles, 2015. Many are the cases of forced child recruitment in the lines of insurgency, of the death and injury of these minors, victims of minefields, and of the damage caused to this weak group by forced displacements. Filmmaking has taken charge in showing this reality. The Colors of the Mountain by Carlos Arbelaez, 2010, is an exceptional film. Its photography has enough strength to reflect what fear really is. The magnificent script refers us to the tension felt by a group of young boys who are attempting to get back their ball, which has fallen into a landminded zone. The movie shows the siege that falls onto their innocent faces. Manuel, Julian, and Pocaluz, three boys who live in the mountains of Antioquia, are the main characters in this story of misfortune. The film shows us how some children begin to feel cornered by the endemic plague of violence. The children of the Perry do not understand very well what is happening. Day by day, there are less children attending the local school. Adults live in a constant annoyance, and the efforts of their teacher for trying to impose colors of hope are vanished. Manuel, Julian, and Pocaluz play soccer, surrounded by a threatening atmosphere which originates from the terrifying violence yet to be imposed by displacement. No other end can be expected. There are only two alternatives, leave the region or die. Small Voices is an animated film which shows the step marks of the conflict in displaced children. According to director Jairo Carrillo, it is a story told by children that lived the war, drawn by them. The main characters are Margarita, Pepito, John, and Juanito. They all explain their experiences and what led them to leave a land where they felt at comfort. The children end up living in a big city, which they do not like, and in which they feel strange. They feel that they had it all, and then they lost it all. The tragedy exposed by one of them, who was tricked by the gorilla, and who was taken to combat in the jungle, turns to be really impacting. This small voice is a dramatic testimony of the decisive influence of the gorilla in changing the dreams of many children into authentic nightmares. In small voices, the boys expose their desires to end the long nightmare. The children want to dream, 
to play and to return to the places from which they were displaced. Listening to them is an obligated step in order to continue the process of reconciliation. Colombians are called to overcome this terrible curse, breaking the ties of indifference and the deep loneliness. How to construct a more decent society, in which paraphrasing our noble of literature in the autumn of the patriarch, in that country that we did not choose by our decision, but that was given to us made, as has been always with that feeling of unreality, with that smell of shit, with those people without history and who do not believe in anything but in life. Movies about the armed conflict in Colombia have shown the horror. The stinks of violence are very unpleasant, but we must accept our responsibilities. Movies are a unique opportunity to strip our own shame. But however, as it happens with all the other arts, it is not an easy task to represent something provoked by so much pain as the one in the Colombian conflict. It becomes a titanic effort for the artist to register in his memory. The silence produced by the conflict, the apocalyptic sounds and noises of combat, and the smells of putrefaction that come from death spread it among all places. For example, appropriating the quarries from Pablo Montoya through Theodore de Bray, a painter-recorder, and of the leading characters in his book, Triptych of Infame. It is pertinent to paraphrase and to inquire the limits of the following terms, how to approach the blood spillings to our daily life, and to make them touch our comfort. Reality will always be more atrocious and more sublime than the diverse forms that they have of showing them to us. Nevertheless, the big screen shows itself to us like a mirror through which misery resounds turned into terror. It is unavoidable that sitting there in our seats we feel tormented by our indolence. The vanity of evil, such as described by philosopher Hannah Anred, this case is configured. Where are we? It is necessary to have a collective memory so that society becomes engaged. Through movies, it is possible to find an effective tool for our own acknowledgments. Once the screen shows it to us, it becomes unavoidable to question ourselves on the insensitivity that has wrought in a society which does not recognize an invisible and profoundly absurd Colombia. In these instances, we must say, no more. To act is the next step. Without unknowing all the obstacles coming from an indifferent civil society, we applaud the efforts made by directors, producers, filmmakers, and actors involved in the Colombian filmmaking industry. They all provide a valuable testimony so our dead ones can finally be recognized. As said by Santiago Gamboa, movies are a valuable material to testify on the endemic conflict that has degraded the actors of the conflict involved. Art allows us to reconstruct memory, and movies as an artistic manifestation does so. According to Jose Luis Rugeles, director of the movie Alias Maria, movies must help to construct the memory of the conflict. Movies are the great mirror of our cowardice. Whatever happened to Manier, the street seller, Marina, Jairo, Roland, Pocaluz, Julian, Pepito, Margarita, Juanito, John, among others, the voices of these characters, as well as their silences, will continue rumbling in our ears. These victims are people stripped of their humanity on account of an absurd conflict. 
God has made of them spectrums. We must acknowledge that up to now in our society, the surviving victim has been made into a shadow. He feels as dead as the ones whose lives have been taken by the actions of the violent. As illustrated by one of the voices of the shadow of the walker, we refer to the words of a rootless that comparing himself to the slaughter exposes. Dijeron primero que eran guerrillos, después que no, que paracos, después que narcos, después que, que el ejército. Pero al fin de cuentas, lo que uno sabe es que están muertos, hermano, como yo.